In this video, we're going to look at upper and lower bounds. Let's start off with a list of numbers. These numbers might be the length of pipes. So 27.6 meters, we might have 28.1 meters, 29.3 meters, we might have 30.16 meters, 33.9 meters, and 34.7 meters. If we look to round all of these numbers to the nearest 10, we could say they all round to 30. If we think about the numbers in the 20s, they can either round to 20 or to 30. We know numbers 25 or more would round up to 30. All the numbers 30 or greater can either round to 30 or to 40. If they're strictly less than 35, we could say that they're going to round down to 30 to the nearest 10. So let's look at this now and look at the values that would satisfy this. So all of the values that would round to 30 to the nearest 10. The way I like to do it is draw a line above and below. You certainly don't need to do it, but it might help you out. So what we're doing is considering now an interval of 10. All I'm going to do is split that in half and consider going 5 below and 5 above. So what I could say now, my length of wood or piping or whatever it is, could be equal to or greater than 30 minus the 5, which would give me 25. Yet in turn, they would have to be strictly less than 35. We would say now that 25 is the lower bound and 35 is the, so that's the lower bound, LB, and that is the upper bound, UB. So we're looking at all values that would round to 30 to the nearest 10. So let's say we made that interval slightly tighter and we were looking now, so this is going to be the lower bound. We were looking at 30, we were looking at all values that round to 30 to the nearest 5. This time above the line I'm going to put 5 and below the line I'm going to split that up. So if I split that up we could have uh, now 2.5 in this direction, 2.5 in that direction. So above and below. So the length of our piping could be equal to or greater than 27.5, yet in turn strictly less than 32.5. So all lengths in this particular interval now will round to 30 to the nearest 5. What we're going to do is work through a range of different questions on upper and lower bounds and then move on to some practical examples. So in this part we're asked to find the upper and lower bounds in the following cases. So 3 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. So if I consider now 3 centimetres, above I'm going to have 1 centimetre, and then below I'm going to split that up, and I'm going to have half a centimetre. So I know I've got 1 to play with, so I can go half in this direction, and half in this direction. This might be quite obvious, but we can say now that the lower bound is going to be on here, 2.5 centimetres, and the upper bound is going to be 3.5 centimetres. So I've just considered the distance between these two will be one centimetre. A common error is that students put, well, if it's to the nearest centimetre, we're going to have two and we're going to have four. That now is two centimetres and that is wrong. OK, we're going to look at 245 to two significant figures. So the second significant figure is the four and that's in the, uh, the tens column. So if we think about this, we're dealing now with 10. So if I put a line above and then a line below, we're dealing with 10 and we can split that in half. So that's what we're dealing with. So I can go 5 below or subtract 5 or I could add 5. So we can say that the lower bound, LB, is going to be 240. The upper bound, UB, is going to be 250. And remember, that is a strict inequality. It won't include 250 exactly. That will now round up to the next value. OK, let's look at the next one. 2.15 metres to the nearest 5 centimetres. So let's go ahead and put that as centimetres. That's 215 centimetres. I want this to the nearest 5 centimetres. So I'm playing with 5 centimetres here, and I can split that up. I can go 2.5 now below, and I can go 2.5 above. We've only got 5 to play with. So in terms of centimetres, let's look at centimetres first. The lower bound will be 212.5. 
the upper bound in terms of centimetres will be 217.5. So in terms of metres, we can say 2.125 is the lower bound and 2.175 is the upper bound. If we look at 26.6 to one decimal place, so 26.6, we're looking at this now to one decimal place. So if we're looking at one decimal place, we're looking to the nearest tenth. So I'm dealing with tenths or 0 0.1. So I can split this up 0 0.05 below and 0 0.05 above. So we can say now that this is going to be 26.55 as the lower bound. And then the upper bound, we're going to have now 26.65. So all I'm doing is just writing it now and just adding or subtracting half of the given interval. Exactly the same with the next one. We've got 32.9 correct to three significant figures. The third significant figure is in the temps column, or if you like, 0 0.1. So we can split that up. So if I think about this now, I'm dealing with 0 0.1. I can go 0 0.05 below and 0 0.05 above. This is 0 0.1, this is the same length. So we look at the lower bound and we're going to have 32.85, then the upper bound is going to be 32.95. So that's all I've done. I've just gone ahead and written all of the values that will round to 32.9 millimeters, correct to three significant figures. And remember, of course, put your units on millimetres and millimetres. So let's go ahead and look at some questions in context. A length of wood measures 3 metres long by 10 centimetres wide. Smaller pieces of wood are to be cut from it, each measuring 10 centimetres by 35 millimetres, the width correct to the nearest millimetre. We're asked to calculate the maximum and minimum number of pieces of wood pieces that can be cut from it. So let's just have a look at what's going on here. And I'm just going to change this over. We've got three meters and we're dealing now. And this won't be accurate, but it will give us some idea. So what I've got then is this uh, piece of wood here. The 10 centimeters doesn't really matter as this is what we're going to have. And we're going to be cutting them down like so. Now three meters is going to give me 300 centimeters or 3000 millimeters. So this is 3,000 millimetres. So what I'm going to do is be slicing this like so, and I want to know the maximum and minimum I can cut from it. The way I like to do this is to have an upper and lower bounds table. When we come on to more challenging examples, this will really help. So what I'm going to have then is the lower bound. So the lower bound, and then I'm going to have the upper bound. So these now are 35 millimetres correct to the nearest millimetre. So the lower bound will be 34.5 millimetres and the upper bound is going to be 35.5 millimetres. So each of these now, and again if you wanted to do your little uh, 35 and then go half above and half below, that's entirely up to you. So if we think about this now, if these are only 34.5 and we cut this up, we can do 3000 divided by 34.5 and that will give us the value. The 10 centimetres remains. There's no problem with that. So what we can do is look at the max. The maximum is going to be when we take the larger vol uh, value in the numerator and the smallest value in the denominator. Here, we've got a fixed value in the numerator. So this is going to be 3,000, and we're going to divide that by the 34.5. So that will give me the max number, the minimum number is going to be the 3,000 divided by the 35.5. Essentially what it's saying here is that we're cutting these chunks. And I'll just draw them. Let's say one is that big and then the other is that big. If we cut them into slices this big compared to this big, we're obviously going to end up with more here. And that will give us the maximum number. So let's go ahead and put this in a calculator. So we've got 3,000 and we're going to divide this now by 34.5, and that's going to give me on here 86.95 and so on and so forth, so 86.9, so 0.95 dot 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 dot, therefore I can cut now a maximum of 86. 
I can't cut the 87th one as we are not quite there. So if I look at the next one, if I just swap this over to 35, let's swap that over, and that is going to give me 84.5 and so on and so forth. So 84.5 dot 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 dot, therefore the minimum number I can cut will be 84. So if we were looking to fulfill an order and they said, well, we need at least 85 of these, well, we can't guarantee that we can do that because this number of 35 is given correct to the nearest millimetre. So we might only be able to scrape 84 out. So we could say the absolute guaranteed number we could provide for a company who wanted this is 84. OK, let's look at another question. On this one, we're told mugs are made in the shape of a cylinder with internal dimensions of 9.3 centimetres tall and 7.5 centimetres diameter, both measurements correct to the nearest millimetre. What is the maximum amount of liquid it will hold? What is the minimum amount of liquid it will hold? OK, let's just draw a quick sketch of what's going on here. So what we've got then is this uh, cylinder. So we know a cylinder, and I'll just draw this up, a cylinder is going to look something like so. So if we put the sides on, we're going to have a circle on the end, and then we have now the diameter. We're given now the diameter. So let's just put this on. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to say now is the following. That is the diameter. We've got a height as well, and this is going to be just here. So let's just put that on. We'll put the height on. So we've got a height. So this is going to be 9.3, and the diameter is 7.5. The volume of this is given as pi r squared height. So that is the volume, and that's what we're looking at here. What I'm going to do here is draw up an upper and lower bounds table. So I'm going to consider now the height, and I'm going to consider the radius. So firstly, we'll look at the diameter. So what we'll have is a lower bound. So this is the minimum it can be, and this is the upper bound. So if we start with the diameter, and then we're going to have height, what we have now is 7.5, and this is given to the nearest millimetre. We have to be very careful here. So what we've got is 75 millimetres to the nearest millimetre. So it's going to be 74.5, and then we're going to have 75.5. So my lower bound is 74.5, my upper bound for the diameter is 75.5. If we look, this is going to be 93 millimetres, so 93 millimetres, and that is given correct now to the nearest millimetre. So 92.5 will be the lower bound, 93.5 will be the upper bound. So if I just put this in, the smallest it can be is 92.5 millimetres, and then the next one is going to be 93.5 millimetres. Remember, this now is going to give us the, um, the diameter. So if you want to put in the radius, you can simply take the 74.5 and divide that by 2. And that's going to give us 37.25. So 37.25 is the radius. And then with this one, you can half that one. So 75.5 divided by 2 will give you the radius, which is going to be 37.75. So 37.75. So 37.25 and 37, and just popping that on, 37.75. So if we want the maximum, we need to take the upper bounds in both cases. We're trying to maximise this. So we want the maximum height, and we want now the maximum diameter or radius. So if we look at the max, what we're going to do in both cases, we're going to have upper bound and upper bound. This won't always be the case. So we can say the volume is going to be pi multiplied by the radius squared, which is 37.75, which we square, and multiply this by 93.5. If we want the minimum amount of liquid, so the minimum volume, we're going to take the lower bound and the lower bound. So we would say that the volume is going to be pi. We've got the 37.25, which we need to square, and we'll multiply that by the 92.5.
So let's go ahead and do that, and we can do the first one. So what we're going to have then is the following. We're going to have on here, let's put that in, we can have pi multiplied now by the 37.75, which is the radius, which we square, and we're going to multiply this by 93.5. So that's going to give me 418596. So the max, so max is 418596. 596 and remember this is going to be now millimeters i'm writing this in millimeters cubed if we look at the minimum we can just swap these values over so we can have 37.25 in here so 37.25 and then finally we'll have 92.5 so the minimum is 403221 so minimum 403 so min so let's put that there min and then we can have 403, what was it, 403, 221. Uh, 403, 221, and that's going to be millimetres cubed. So that's what we end up with. So all I've done is converted them up into millimetres. We're not asked to give it in, uh, in any particular um, unit. The maximum in millimetres is this, the minimum is that. Okay. The quantities x and y are given to one significant figure as x is equal to 20 and y is equal to 40. Find the minimum possible value of each expression below. So let's go ahead, upper and lower bounds table. So straight off, I always draw my upper and lower bounds table. I think doing this gives you a good idea now of how to do these questions. Also, if you get really stuck, as long as you've got these values, you can play about with them until they give you whichever value, the maximum or the minimum. I'm not advocating that, um, but it might be a possibility for you if you're really struggling. So lower bound and upper bound. So these are given to one significant figure. So this is rounded to the nearest 10. So if we think to one significant figure, the lower bound is 15 and the upper bound is 25. To one significant figure, this is to the nearest 10. So we could say now that that would have a lower bound of 35 and an upper bound of 45. So if we look at the minimum possible now, what I'll do, I'll just write these on and we'll go through this from here. All we're going to have is now the minimum of this one is going to be the lower bound. So we're going to have the lower bound plus the lower bound. With this one, what we want to do to find the minimum is take the lower bound and subtract away the upper bound. With this one, if we want the smallest value, we're going to have the lower bound multiplied by the lower bound. If we want the minimum value for this one, what we're going to have is the smallest number in the numerator, which will be the lowest bound, and we're going to divide that by the upper bound. Just think, if we take the biggest number and divide it, uh, sorry, the smallest number and divide it by the biggest, we have the least. With this one, again, we're looking for the minimum. So we want now the lower bound, the smaller number, divided by the bigger number. The flip of that would have the maximum where we have the upper bound over the lower bound. So let's do this one. Lower bound and lower bound, we're going to have 15. So 15 plus 35 is going to be equal to 50. So that's the lower bound. The upper bound would now be 70. If we look at the lower bound of y, that's 35. Subtract away the upper bound uh, on, of x, that's going to give us 10. So I've taken the, uh, sorry, taken the, the lower bound, let's just get this right, the lower bound of this one, and we subtract away. That's perfectly fine. So that's going to give us 10. If we look at the next one, we want the lower bound multiplied by the lower bound. So it's going to be those two multiplied, which is going to give us, what, 525. Let's just put that for the calculator. So 15 times by 35 is 525. So lower bound and lower bound, 525. It's these two numbers multiplied. If we look at this one, we want the lower bound of x. Well, the lower bound of x is going to be 15 divided by the upper bound of y, which is going to be 45, which is going to give us one third or 0 0.3 recurring. If we go the other way with y divided by x, then we want on this one the lower bound, so that's 35, and then we're going to have the upper bound of x, which is 25, which will give us now 7 over 5, which we could write as 1.4 
if we wished. So that's looking at the minimum possible values. We're taking the smallest and we're dividing it by the largest. So quite a nice, quite a nice range of different questions there. Okay, we're told a full jar of coffee weighs 750 grams. The empty jar weighs 540 grams, so 545 grams. Both weights are accurate to the nearest five grams. We need to calculate the maximum and minimum possible values of the weight of coffee in the jar. So it's straight off, upper and lower bound table. So let's go ahead and do it. What we're going to have then is the upper and the lower bound. So we'll start with the full jar, or if you like, you might want to write this as jar, so jar plus the coffee, and this one is just the jar. So if we look at the lower bound and the upper bound, these are given correct to the nearest five grams. So if you want to draw your little line, you can do. Alternatively, to the nearest five grams, the lower bound of the coffee and the jar is going to be 747.5. The upper bound will be 752.5. So I'm playing with a five gram total. Exactly the same here. Five split over two is going to give us 2.5. So five for 2.5 and 547.5. So we now have the upper and lower bounds. We need to calculate the maximum and minimum possible values of the weight of the coffee in the jar. Now, this is quite uh, could be quite confusing. When I'm going to work out the max, what I'm going to do now is the following. I like to think about it like so. If we consider these two, I want the maximum both the coffee and the jar can weigh, so we'll have 752.5 and we're going to subtract away the lightest the jar could be, which is 542.5. So what I've done is taken the upper bound and I'm going to subtract away the lower bound. If we look at the minimum, if we take the minimum, what we're saying now is that this right here is going to weigh as little as possible and the jar itself is going to weigh as much as possible. So our overall weight, including now the coffee, is very small and the jar itself is very heavy. So we're now going this way. Just think logically about that and it should make sense. So we want now at this stage right here, uh, let's just change it over, I've written that as 7. 25 instead of 752 let's just change that so 752 this one is going to be the 747.5 minus the maximum it could be which is 547.5 so let's look at this one right here what's that going to give me in total that's going to give me now 210 and this one is going to give me 200 so calculate the maximum and minimum possible values of the weight of the coffee in the jar. The max it can be is 210. The minimum it can be is 200 grams. And that's why I like to split it here. The joffy, uh, the, the, joffy, the coffee in the jar and just the jar and considering upper and lower bounds. Remember the difference between these two values is how much coffee is in there. Okay, let's look at this one. David travels from Manchester to London in three and a half hours, measured to the nearest half hour. The distance from Manchester to London is 200 miles, measured to the nearest 10 miles. We're asked to calculate the upper and lower bounds for the average speed of David's journey. So straight into this upper and lower bounds table. So if we do that, what we're going to have are two different things to consider. We're going to look at the time, so the time, and we're going to look at the distance. So if we look at the lower bound and the upper bound. So we got 3.5 hours. So this is 3.5 hours and this is correct to the nearest half hour. So if we think we're dealing with half an hour or 0 0.5, so we can have 3.25 hours or 3.75 hours. The reason I'm writing it like this instead of 3 and a quarter or 3, uh, 3 15 and 3 45 is that it can cause issues. So, to the nearest half an hour, 3.25 hours, so 3.25 hours, and I'll put that just there. So this isn't 3 hours and 25 minutes, and then we got 3.75 hours, or if you'd like, we could say 3 hours and 45 minutes. 
200 miles to the nearest 10, so we can go 5 either way. 195 is the lower bound, and 205 is the upper bound. We need to calculate the upper and lower bounds for the average speed of David's journey. We know now that speed is equal to the distance divided by time. So let's go ahead and look at these and work these out. So what we're looking at is a maximum speed. So we'll consider the maximum speed. So if we think about this now, for the maximum speed, we need the greatest value. So if we take now the upper bound, and I'll write this here, this is going to be the upper bound of the distance, which is 205, divided now by the 3.25. So what I've got here is the maximum in the numerator. So max, and this is going to be max over min, or if you like, we're going to have the upper bound divided by the lower bound. This will give us the maximum value. If we look at the minimum speed, just consider now that he hasn't travelled that far and it took him a lot longer. Often saying this to yourself really does help out. As stated, if you're really struggling, you can just try combinations until you get the largest and the smallest value. That, though, isn't really showing much understanding. So the maximum speed is going to be the furthest distance in the shortest time. The minimum speed is going to be the shortest distance in the longest time. So if we do the first one now, we've got 205 miles, and we're going to divide that by the time of 3.25, and that gives us now 63, and I'll write this, 63.1. That's going to be miles per hour, and that is the three significant figures. So that is his max average speed. If we look at the minimum that he's done, the minimum average speed, well, he's not travelled very far, and it's took him a long time. So you can see putting it in words can make it slightly easier. Divided by 3.75. Uh, that gives me 52. So exactly 52. So 52 mph is going to be the minimum. So that's the difference between the two. So quite a nice little question, and it does take a bit of thought. Okay, the formula T is equal to 2P over Q cubed is used in a science lesson at school. P is 1.2 correct to one decimal place, and Q is 0 0.67 correct to two significant figures. We're asked to find the difference between the maximum and minimum value of T given our answer to five decimal places. So let's go ahead and build up our table, upper and lower bounds, as usual. So what we're going to have then is the following, and I'll just put another one here, so we'll take our upper and lower bounds. So what we'll have, we've got now P. So we'll have P and we'll have Q. So P and Q, we need a lower bound and we need an upper bound. This is correct to one decimal place. So we're dealing with 0 0.1, so we can go 0 0.05, in either direction. So lower bound 1.15, upper bound 1.25. This one is correct to two significant figures. The second significant figure are the 100s. So if we look, the lower bound will be 0 uh, 0 0.665 and the upper bound will be 0 0.675. So that is correct now to the two significant figures. So we want to find now the difference between the max and the minimum. So if we think about this, and I'm going to call it T max, if we want the maximum, what we're going to do is take the upper bound and divide it by the lower bound. Remember, if we take a big lot of money and divide it by very few people, we're going to end up with more. If we want the minimum now, what we're going to have is the smallest amount, the lower bound, and then we're going to divide that by the upper bound. Just thinking about this realistically, if we substitute this in, that is what we're going to end up with. So let's work out these calculations. So we're taking now the upper bound. So what we're going to have then, the upper bound is going to be two lots of the 1.25, and we're going to divide that now by the lower bound, which is going to be 0 0.665, and we're going to cube that. I'm then going to find the difference. So that means I'm going to subtract from that two lots of the lower bound, which is going to be 1.15, divided now by the upper bound, which is going to be 0 0.675, which we need to cube. 
I would show each of these in my workings as I went. I'm just going to do this now as one straight answer. But again, in your workings, just go ahead and show the steps in between. So that's what we're going to have. That's going to be my upper bound. So 0 0.665, which we need to cube. And then we're going to subtract from that now two lots of the lower bound, 1.115, one uh, and then we're going to divide that by 0 0.675, which we need to cube. So let's check that I've got all of those values in. That looks pretty good, and then we'll find out what that's going to be. So that's going to be 1.02, so 1.02, and then we're going to have, and I'll just write all of these out, 2564, so 2564, so 2564, uh, and then write in the rest out. Obviously, it'll be easier for you to do with the calculator on the, the table, and then we're going to have 203. So hopefully, I've got all of that in there, 203, and we need to give this now to five decimal places. So here's the fifth decimal place, so we can say this is going to be 1.02256. And that is to 5 dp. So that now is the difference. I've just simply subtracted them away. Should have really worked out the, the steps in between. Um, but I'm going to leave it like so. So there we go. A tutorial on upper and lower bounds. We're simply looking at now at all of the values. But we're round to a given figure. And then we look to carry out some calculations.